So today I'm going to talk to you guys about two major games coming to Switch. One of them we know for a little bit now, earlier this week, uh, and one we learned about over the last 24 hours or so. And these are major AAA third-party games coming to Switch. And what's really cool about these games is it just shows the ever-expanding library of Switch and the wide variety of content it's getting between Nintendo games, indies, indies AAA third-party. I know we don't have everything. We don't have the Assassin's Creed's of the world, typically. I know we have Assassin's Creed 3, Assassin's Creed Odyssey uh, streaming in Japan, but we don't have you know anything local. We don't have Origins, all that stuff. Uh, we haven't heard any plans for the next Assassin's Creed coming to Switch. Uh, we don't have the new Call of Duty Modern Warfare. I get it. We don't have everything, but we do have Doom Eternal. We got Mortal Kombat 11 earlier this year. We just had Wolfenstein Youngblood release, uh, and now we have these couple games coming, and uh, these are a big deal. So let's just jump right into them. So first up, we have The Outer Worlds. Uh, this is an, an article done by Kotaku, but this isn't actually the announcement. The announcement was its own separate video that basically is the exact same trailer they have shown before, uh, but it just says, hey, we're releasing on Switch now, and uh, it's going to come out after it releases on PlayStation 4, PC, Xbox, which I believe it does on October 25th or whatever, so we're looking 2020. Uh, the Outer Worlds is going to come to Switch in 2020. The Outer Worlds is made by Obsidian Entertainment, uh, the, you know, Neverwinter Nights and, and, and games like that, Dungeon Siege, etc. Uh, they are a AAA developer, so it is just kind of neat to see one of their games who come to Switch. Uh, I think they did South Park The Stick of Truth as well. Uh, I know Ubisoft published it, but uh, yeah, it's uh, that, that game's obviously on Switch, and it's the only Obsidian game that I'm aware of that's actually on Nintendo Switch until now. And the Outer Worlds is coming. Uh, and I just kind of want to give you a brief overview of what The Outer Worlds is. Uh, that way you have a better idea in case you haven't paid much attention to this game because it has been greatly overshadowed by the, mod the modern warfares of the world and the Doom Eternals. Uh, so it is a Norman Rockwell nostalgia-style artwork that is idealized view of life but used as a tool for propaganda. Everything related to a product is very happy and cheerful. The corporations are trying to make their employees feel better about their lives. Look at all these wonderful things you can buy. Isn't it great that we give you these things? In other worlds, you may not be the chosen one, but you do end up navigating a complicated, conflict-filled world, trying to figure out where you fit. It is a world of dueling perspectives. As the player, you have the power to decide who to empower. Hines said that although the situation seems pretty grim for some of the characters you meet, things are actually going just fine as long as you're the head of a major corporation. Pretty interesting take, right? Uh, this is the idealized capitalist utopia because there is no regulations, no restrictions. What matters to them is maximizing profits, which is pretty much the idealized you know, capitalism utopia. Uh, it's a little bit of the 30s to 50s, that whole idea of a corporate town. Everything comes from the company you work for. There's a company store you buy things from. So all your money goes right back into the company, that kind of closed off ecosystem. Um, the influence from history is clear. Uh, each of the corporations has a distinct flavor, promising different benefits to its employees. In Fallbrook, the town I visited during my time playing the game is in Take Two offices, was run by the corporation Sublight. Uh, so stuff like that. And I kind of want to give you an idea of what the game sort of looks like. So uh, I'm not going to show you audio for this one, but we're just going to kind of skip through it here. Uh, and you can see some great dialogue going on. Uh, I think, think there's some gunplay in here later. Uh, let's keep this going here. Yeah, here's some gunplay. I'm going to see him kind of shoot a couple enemies. And then uh, there'll be some other characters that pop on screen that are also shooting. Um, so it kind of has a little bit of an FPS feel to it as well. Uh, it, it's just generally a, a very nice-looking AAA third-party game, something that we wouldn't expect on a Nintendo platform just one generation ago. Uh, the article goes on to say one of my favorite characters is one you haven't met yet. She's a representative for the board. She's fairly high up in the board's organization. She just gets a very brutal uh, practicality to her. It comes from a space where the colony must run efficiently for everyone to succeed and survive, and anything that gets in the way of that efficiency must be eliminated for the sake of the entire colony, which gets very dark very quickly. But it's all from the perspective of, yes, I must make these hard decisions so everyone can prosper and succeed pretty interesting concept so the other game though uh that we want to talk about here you probably noticed it up here already is devil's hunt and we're actually going to watch this entire trailer together i've already watched it once but hey what's it gonna hurt to watch it one more time so here we go m rated Finally, savior and destroyer it's been a long time Laopi Games. This is actually their first game. They're a brand new studio made of former AAA developers. They're making this game in Unreal Engine 3. 1C Entertainment is a uh, just a publisher. They publish games even for Ubisoft. So very dark and ominous. How do I get back? 
I like the visuals a lot. It must be hell. <laughs> oh, that's very funny. Is that Satan? There is no bad. You're evil, and this is hell. It's where you belong, Desmond. Desmond. Assassin's Creed, baby. <laughs> Besides, I don't let the damn out of This must be a struggle between hell and heaven. Bad. I think this is based on a book, if I remember right. Desmond is extraordinary. Oh! He is valuable. What was that one people. game on uh, Xbox 360 where it like, let you have like those changing arm abilities? Ah, oh, man. I can't believe I can't remember what the game is called. I played the hell out of it, too. Let me choose for myself. It was really cool. Have to make a choice. I don't know why we never got a Save sequel for that game. Or destroy one That's what that reminds one. me of, where he's like morphing his arm and stuff. Oh, creepy. Was oh, he taking his soul? Are you looking to do with it? Deal with the devil. <laughs> yeah, it must be the devil. Okay. Uh, so as you can see, it says it's coming September 17th. That's just the PC version. Uh, they said that the uh, Xbox One. PlayStation 4 and Switch versions are coming later. So you're talking 2020. Uh, same is basically true for the Elder Worlds. That's coming in 2020 as well for Switch. So uh, pretty exciting stuff, in my opinion. This game looks fantastic. Uh, it was announced last year, but we haven't really heard much about Devil's Hunt since it was announced. Uh, I think it was announced uh, back during E3 or something last year. I know it was June uh, of last year when we started getting information on it. So that's why I presume it was E3. I didn't pay a whole lot of attention to it at the time. It wasn't coming to Switch back then. Uh, and it was kind of, again, overshadowed by other major games that were being talked about at E3. So uh, I'm really excited about Devil's Hunt and Outer Worlds coming to Switch. And I think uh, that these are two amazing gets for the platform. Now, you might wonder, you know, why am I making a big deal out of these two games? Because it's not, you know, Call of Duty Modern Warfare or... Uh, yeah, I, I don't even know, I guess Doom Eternal, but we're getting Doom Eternal, so, uh, it, it's, it's not one of those, uh, major, major games that everyone in the world seems hyped for, but what it is, are high quality third party AAA games that are often overshadowed on other platforms, and I feel like they have a very good chance of finding a solid life on Switch, where an audience is kind of hungry for these wide variety of games. Switch's library is slowly starting to become one that... Uh, other platforms could be jealous of. Not only are you getting the best of the best Nintendo games, and they're just slamming us hard for the rest of the year with those exclusive titles. I mean, heck, we just had three exclusives in the last two months. Uh, I think that we also have to look at the reality that not only are the indie games flourishing on Switch, but we're starting to get a lot of high-quality third-party games. I mean, we have The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt coming. Uh, we don't have the exact release date for that yet. We'll probably find it out during Gamescom. Uh, we, uh, we got Devil's Hunt and The Outer Worlds coming as well. Doom Eternal. We just had Wolfenstein Youngblood release on the Switch as well, day and date. Uh, we had Mortal Kombat 11 earlier this year released day and date. We know NBA 2K20 is coming later this year. Uh, the new, next FIFA is coming, although it's a Legacy Edition, so I don't know how excited you should be about that, but that's pretty much what FIFA's been the whole time. At least it's something. I guess it's better to have it than not have it. Uh, and for a portable uh, game, it's it's. I mean, it's really good. It's the best FIFA's ever been portably. But um, you know, as, as when Nintendo talks about Switch being a home console, Legacy Edition doesn't really fit that. But uh, and I already mentioned with things like Witcher Three. So uh, the platform's just getting slammed, and I like it. This wide variety of content is exactly what it needs. No. We don't really have a sufficient replacement for something like Call of Duty, right? We don't have a Call of Duty replacement. Even though we have Fortnite, uh, it'd be nice to get Apex Legends on the platform. Uh, you know, it'd be nice to get Overwatch. We have Paladins. I don't know why Overwatch is in here, too. Uh, maybe they're waiting because they're going to launch a new Overwatch game. I have no idea what the plans are at Activision Blizzard for that stuff. But uh, I'm pretty stoked in general that about these games because it just keeps adding legitimacy to the Switch's library in terms of its variety. See, Nintendo platforms have had this uh, reputation pretty much since Wii. Uh, basically, being you buy the platform to play Nintendo games, and then you play some neat spin-off indie games or some one-off exclusive games like Just Dance at the time or um, Mario Plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. And those are fantastic games in their own right. But uh, or, you know, Octopath Traveler last year, again, fantastic games in their own right, but uh, you never really had that multi-platform support at the level that we saw on GameCube, N64, SNES, 
NES, all that stuff. And now here we are on Switch, and it feels like we're getting back to that place. I mean, Bethesda wasn't putting games at all on Nintendo systems, and now, you know, between Doom and, and uh, you know, the, the Wolfenstein franchise, we had Skyrim, uh, so, you know, that gives us a faint hope of Elder Scrolls Six potentially being considered for a Nintendo platform, something that I don't think anyone uh, would have ever thought possible before, but Skyrim actually did really well on Switch and was one of the primary games Nintendo advertised with the platform back before it even came out. So, uh, this is something that Nintendo seems to be taking seriously as well. They're taking pride in getting these games. This whole, you know, Switch is for kids. This whole Nintendo is just a kiddie company. Uh, kind of needs to start fading away. It was never really true anyways. And now we're starting to see delivering by these third-party companies, these M-rated, uh, these hardcore gaming experiences that you sink hundreds of hours into are coming. And I'm, I couldn't be more thrilled and uh, again, legitimacy to the Switch's library that I think for some people it really needed. Now, obviously, we all know that all these multi-platform third-party games are going to perform in terms of, I don't know about sales, uh, that's yet to be determined, but in terms of raw performance, you know, we're talking about uh, visuals and stuff like that, uh, frame rate, are going to be worse on Switch than anywhere else. I mean, that's just a given. But you also, in turn, because of the sacrifices, get to take it with you on the go, which is something that a lot of people seem to value. You know, EA, sorry, just because people own Switch and PlayStation 4 doesn't mean they're choosing to play their games on PlayStation 4 when they don't actually have it on Switch, especially an equal version of games on Switch to experience. There isn't really a choice to be made, in my opinion. Uh, and the reason that some of those PlayStation 4 owners, by the way, own a Switch is because PlayStation 4 you can't take with you. So... People might double dip. I don't know. That's a whole other conversation we had yesterday. But I want to you guys for tuning in. Let me know what you think about these two games coming to the Switch. Are you excited? Are you pumped? Uh, are either one of these games games you might consider day one? Wait for some, some reviews. Uh, but are, are you just glad they're coming? Because I know personally, whether I buy them or not, I am thrilled that they are on this platform. Uh, and obviously, I have some bias to Nintendo to be to happy about it. But uh, the more third-party games, the better, in my opinion, regardless of where they're coming from. Anyways, I am Nathaniel Robogents from the Center Prime. Be sure to drop a like on this video, subscribe for more content, and I'll catch you in the next one.